Fifteen days have come and gone. The darkest times have now begun. As Funky Monkey I am known, and now my magic has regrown. And with these words, I welcome you. Ah, but I think we should shed a little light on the subject. Much better. Yes, I welcome you, my muggle friends. And without further ado, let us press on into the Order of the Phoenix. Released in July 2007, The Order of the Phoenix tells of Harry's fifth year at Hogwarts. The Dark Lord has returned, and his influence works over our maturing mage. But the Ministry of Magic is doing all it can to keep this dark secret under wraps. And as if that wasn't enough, it's time to start studying for ordinary wizarding levels. So grab your wand and keep your wits about you as we prepare to meet the Order of the Phoenix. It's a scorching summer, and Dudley Dursley's fallen in with a surprising crowd. This small two-line exchange between Harry and his cousin succinctly sums up all you really need to know about this movie. <laughs> Sheltering from the storm, Harry and his cousin run into some old friends. Back at Shea Dursley, Harry receives some bad news. You are hereby expelled from Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Well, if they can forgive Harry ballooning his aunt in year three, how can they not forgive him saving his cousin now? Which isn't actually so bad when Mad-Eye Moody turns up to rescue our pubescent prestidigitationist. And so, Harry is whisked off to Twelve Grimald Place. His headquarters. The Order of the Phoenix. Yes, the Order of the Phoenix, created by Albus Dumbledore to stand against the Dark Lord the first time he appeared. It has been reconstituted now that the Dark Lord has returned. The next day finds Harry taken to task over the Dementor attack. As the Muggles say, truth will out. That would be the end of it, but for the witness of a Mrs. Fig. Cleared of all charges. And off to Hogwarts, where we meet a new student. Everyone, this is Luna Love, Luna Lovegood. Sweet, sweet, spacey Luna Lovegood. Reminds me of someone else I know in fiction. And a new teacher. Professor Dolores Umbridge. <laughs> Dolores Umbridge. A name that I will curse to the heavens for the rest of my days, for reasons that will quite soon become apparent. And so, despite the mistrust of his housemates, Harry begins classes for another year. But Defense Against the Dark Arts is barely worthy of the title. How do I hate the umbrage? Let me count the ways. 1. You have denied the return of the Dark Lord. 2. You have accused the noble Harry Potter of lying. Three, you are not nearly as innocent as your pink and kitten's exterior suggests. And for speaking out, Harry is punished. Are you beginning to see, my muggle friends? Are you enlightened yet? Can you smell that filth that hides beneath that pink veneer? Which doesn't sit well with Professor McGonagall. But Umbridge is a sneaky beast, and is soon appointed High Inquisitor. And Sirius Black has grave news. Voldemort is on the move. Far from Umbridge's eye, the trio make plans to fight Voldemort. My heart goes out to all who fall in the line of duty. Why, the stories I could tell. And so the Grand Army of Albus Dumbledore is formed. And Neville Longbottom makes an important discovery. But Umbridge won't be denied, and Malfoy would love to get one over on Potter. Luckily, they remain undetected. But a nightmare sparks a sequence of events that will lead the heroes of Hogwarts into adventure once again. 
Fortunate indeed is Arthur Weasley, patriarch of this clan of Weasleys, for he survives this sneaky snake attack. And as spring term begins, Hagrid returns from an important mission. And so, training resumes. Allow me then to reintroduce you to Neville Longbottom, the other boy who lived and he will yet have his part to play. But not this year. No, not this year. But all good things must come to an end. Dumbledore takes the rap for the sessions. The parchment clearly says Dumbledore's army. And vanishes. <laughs> Albus Dumbledore, ladies and gentlemen. Always thinking two moves ahead. Thus begins the reign of Headmistress Umbridge at Hogwarts. And the Owl exam schedule along with it. But the Wild Weasleys won't be denied. Though even in triumph, there is bad news to come. Worse, Umbridge catches him in the act and demands the truth. Hermione leads Umbridge on a wild goose chase through the Forbidden Forest. I really hate children. Four. Your hatred of children. While I admit that they can be annoying at the best of times, they do not know any better, for they are children. Luckily, intervention doesn't have to mean Dumbledore. No, no, no. Oh, I am. Ever the last words of an overprivileged scoundrel, don't you know who I am? And so the stage is set for our finale. Harry and a squad of army students enter the Ministry of Magic's Mysteries Department. But it's not Voldemort that they'll be facing. Our squadron decide that discretion is the better part of valour, but escape is never so simple. Get away from my blood, son. A lot simpler, however, when you have the Order of the Phoenix on your side. But oh dear. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment for Sirius Black. Move on. Dumbledore appears to save the day. Such is the fate of a Dark Lord to become lost to hatred and anger. It is no life, and certainly not one I would wish on anyone. And so we close this chapter with wise words from Dumbledore, and unexpectedly, Luna Lovegood. Well, we said, the things we lose have a way of coming back to us in the end. Thus do we close the book on the Order of the Phoenix. But this one, like its forebear, I cannot put into the House of Love. From here, I see these movies with fresh eyes. And one thing I see is that Dolores Umbridge is a monstrous villain. The kind of lawful evil that justifies horror in the name of order. But aside from her, this is a surprisingly upbeat tale, preparing us for the great final battle, as the Dark Lord seeks dominion over both the muggle and magical worlds. Yes, the side of the angels has much worth fighting for, but the fight will be tough as hell to keep it. 
But we shall get to that. Let us then reconvene seven days hence, and I would advise you to dress smartly, for we shall be meeting the Half-Blood Prince. Spellcasting! D-I-S-M-I-S-S! -S -S. 